Hey, what's up guys? Phil here, and this is a review for the Moza Mini Me Smartphone Gimbal. You will receive the gimbal in a semi-rigid clamshell carry case, a flat micro USB charging cable, a mini tripod, and an instruction manual. The handle and arms are made of a lightweight yet hard durable plastic. It has a flattened wide 7 inch long handle that's easier to hold onto than a skinnier cylinder, even without the rubber grip pads. The unit contains a rechargeable lithium ion battery that takes about 4 hours to charge via the USB port and can power the gimbal for about 10 hours of continuous use. On the side of the handle that faces you are the onboard controls. There is a 4 directional joystick for controlling pan, tilt, and roll of the gimbal. 4 LED lights to indicate battery life and mode, a click and scroll wheel for menu navigation, and the power button is off to the right hand side. There are 4 quarter inch 20 mounting points on this gimbal, one on the bottom, one on the back of the handle, and one on either side of the phone grip. These are great for attaching accessories like the mini tripod, extra lights, microphones, and more. One feature that the Mini Me doesn't have that we've become accustomed to on other gimbals is a trigger button on the other side. While the plastic doesn't feel as durable as metal, it's remarkably lightweight and the gimbal weighs just over one pound without a phone. But even with the max payload of 10.5 ounces, it's still under two pounds and isn't that tiring to hold over longer recording sessions as heavier gimbals might be. You'll also notice an additional full-size USB port on the pitch arm under this rubber door, which is for wired charging of your smartphone off the gimbal's internal battery. The gimbal mount expands to accommodate smartphones up to 3.25 inches in width, and also has built-in wireless Qi charging at the back, if you have a smartphone that supports it. For most larger phones, I found the grip mount to be a tight fit, so even if you use a slim case, you might have to take it off to mount your phone, like I did with the LG G5. If after mounting your phone, you find that it's on a tilt, you'll have to do some simple balancing. Loosen the roll axis thumb screw and slide the arm in or out to balance it. You can also balance the pitch by moving the mount up or down. If you want to switch from landscape to portrait orientation, loosen the thumb screw on the back of the clamp, then rotate your phone and re-tighten the thumb screw. This can be useful for panoramic photos and Instagram. To turn on the gimbal, press and hold the power button for 3 seconds, and you will see the phone automatically balance. One thing Moza recommends is to boot the gimbal into upgrade mode to get the latest firmware. To do this, hold the center shutter button while you long press the power button to turn the gimbal on. The status LEDs on the right should flash. Then open the Moza Genie app and select the device. A firmware upgrade prompt will appear if one is available, and you can click Upgrade Now to update it. When you power on the gimbal, the default mode is Pan Follow, which allows the camera to follow the movement of the gimbal when turning left and right, but locks the tilt and roll axes. In this mode, you can move the joystick up and down to adjust the tilt. One of the things I found tricky about this gimbal is that each button controls more than one function. You can access multiple actions depending on how many times you click a button. So for example, clicking the left button twice toggles on and off the pan or yaw axis lock. When unlocked, the lower right LED will light up. Clicking the left button three times toggles the tilt or pitch axis lock, indicated by the upper right LED. If you long press the left button, this toggles the roll axis lock and there is no status LED for this mode. Whenever an axis is locked, you can use the joystick to change its position. You can control the speed of movement based on how far you move the joystick from center, so small movements move the gimbal slowly, while fully pressing in the direction will move the gimbal quickly. Or manually position it with your hand along the locked axis. The default pan follow speed is smooth but a little slow. So if you need the gimbal to react faster for fast moving objects, double click the right button to enter sports gear mode, which increases the speed of the yaw follow. Double-clicking the down key recenters the gimbal. 
while triple clicking it spins it around for selfie mode. Also, single clicking the power button puts the gimbal to sleep, while double clicking it toggles on and off Qi wireless charging. There's another fairly interesting mode, dubbed Inception Mode, that can be triggered by clicking the up button three times. Here's what that looks like. So it's a lot of key combinations to remember, though if you use this gimbal a lot, then you'll probably have these functions memorized in no time. But if you end up only using the gimbal once in a while, you may find yourself digging out the instruction manual each time to refresh your memory. It's important to note that there are some limitations to the tilt and roll compensations. For panning, you do get 360 degrees rotation. But for tilt, you get 310 degrees. And for roll, you'll only get 165 degrees. The last feature I want to cover is the mobile app available for Android and iOS devices called Moza Genie. This app allows you to pair your phone to the gimbal via Bluetooth so you can control it remotely rather than using the controls on the handle. But be forewarned, it can be finicky and some phone models may not be fully supported. If you are able to use the app, it'll allow you to adjust gimbal and camera settings on the fly, such as motor speed and panning smoothness. In the app, clicking the up button twice will switch between photo and video mode. You can also adjust the zoom or focus of your shot without touching your phone by simply spinning the scroll wheel in the appropriate setting mode. However, when zooming, I wouldn't say that it's super smooth. Again, there are plenty of other key combinations to learn. For example, double-clicking the shutter button lets you snap a photo during shoots. Or you can bring up a gallery of your shots by clicking the right button once. There are additional shooting modes as well like time-lapse and subject tracking, but you'll need to tap the menu button on your phone screen to access it. Early users did report that the tracking feature wasn't working for Android devices, but as of August 16, 2018, I was successfully able to use object tracking on my LG G5, and I could track static and moving objects just fine. Actually, it worked pretty well. Overall, the Moza Mini Me is a pretty fully featured handheld gimbal for smartphones. It stabilizes well and has a lot of options for different kinds of users from beginner to professional. It's also pretty inexpensive compared to other gimbals out there that have less competitive features and performance, making the Moza Mi a good choice for filmmakers on a budget who shoot with their smartphones. It'll even accept adapters for stabilizing action cameras like the GoPro. I hope you enjoyed this review. You can ask me any questions in the comments. I'll put a link to the product in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and join me next time.